All right, so the uh, wing joint of the Great Bassoon is completed printing. I, it is fully assembled now. You can see now the fully completed wing boot joint. Got a cork gasket in there. I've got it threaded on here with a couple nuts attached to uh, some bolts that are inside here so that this part is completely removable. What I've done is I've taken my bassoon bogle and put a bit of Teflon tape on it because the receiver on the Great Bassoon is naturally a little bit bigger. But luckily the bassoon bogle is only 10 millimeters off from the calculated length of the Great Bassoon bogle. But here's the cool part. I'm able to now play the first notes of the Great Bassoon. What I've got here is a Baroque bassoon reed. I've scraped it down a little bit to make it play with a little bit more modern bassoon characteristics, so it should be able to crow. Um, a typical Baroque bassoon does not crow. It just... But I've got a crow on there now. This now fits pretty nicely on the great bassoon, or on my bassoon vocal. And if all goes according to plan, the first note I should hear is a C. Bum, bum. Mm, I'm getting a B natural, so... Interesting. So I wonder what would happen if we um, make the reed just a hair shorter. Well, let's find out. The, the goal was to have this play a hair on the sharp side, but if I'm a hair on the low side, well, that's not where I want it. So everything is playing a, a hair flat, which means that there might need to be some recalculation done. We'll figure that out. But those are the very first notes of the great bassoon. Um, we are running a hair on the flat side. So eh, not, where, not where I want it, um, but we're, we're, we're sitting at 415. But I think a lot of that is in the, the reed design here because this is a, a, a Baroque bassoon reed. Let me clip the tip back just once more because it did get noticeably sharper when I first clipped it. So I've clipped it again. And uh, that, that crows a little easier. It is playing a bit chromatically. It's a little bit on the rough side. So I'm going to do some more working on the reed. See if I can get this to play a little bit more uh, bassoon-like. Well, you know what I could do? I could just put a bassoon reed on it. And that could change things. <laughs> closer to in tune so that's that's interesting that that first note was definitely a C or in the ballpark of a C so it does def definitely need with this particular vocal it needs that little bit smaller read so I've got some some work to do some experimenting to do there may be a lot of experimentation with reads on this thing so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens but here it is the uh, completed great bassoon wing joint and the first notes on the great bassoon um, there's going to be a lot of uh, tone refinement that's going to need to go in. And over the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to do some of that myself here. But there you go. Great bassoon. First notes. 
Um, I got a lot of work to do though. So let me know what you think and uh, I'll keep updating on the project. So it's uh, nearly uh, nine o'clock at night and I've been messing with this now for um, four hours doing a whole bunch of research trying to figure out what went wrong in the calculations and I've been talking with Richard and he uh, we're talking about something called the boundary layer effect and um, short long story short um, I did not calculate for the the boundary layer effect, which is a really, really complex um, equation in fluid dynamics. So uh, that essentially means if you're not calculating for the boundary layer effect, um, your in, the tube will tend to be some percentage longer than it needs to be. So what that means is um, this is just longer than it needs to be. I've gone through and recalculated what the vocal length should be. So, in theory, it had, if there were no such thing as a boundary layer effect, this should be playing sharp. Uh, but then there's pesky fluid dynamics. <laughs> So it makes a sound, it seals, it's, you know, airtight. Um, the overall design is functional. Uh, I know at this point how to put keys on it, uh, but I can't put keys on it until I get, um, I get the tone holes in the right spots and I get this thing where it will play closer to in tune. Um, there is so much at this point to, to, to deal with. So I'm kind of at a crossroads here. I can do one of two things. One, I can proceed forward in creating the entire instrument at uh, the original calculated design. That means when said and done, I will actually have a, an instrument that would be kind of at A415. Which, of course, won't be useful unless we say it's a bassoon in F-sharp. So we don't really want to do that. Um, all, although, you know, if I do have a completed bassoon in, in F-sharp, it would definitely be a one-of-a-kind novelty piece. Um, but the other option is to completely go back to the literal drawing board and um, start over with my, my calculations. So... Yeah, um, I so I'm I'm going to kind of debate over the next few days exactly what I need to do, um, how I am going to uh, proceed. But uh, if I don't have to do too much alteration, I think it's possible I can still use uh, this joint here. Uh, this part here, though, will um, need to go by the wayside because it. It would essentially be a, a 415 joint, and I need 440. So it's possible that all the tone holes can just be shifted up in the design. Um, however, we're, we're, we'd start running into issues with this first tone hole, so we'll see. Um, I don't know. So yeah, that, that's where we are. I've got serious errors now that I have to deal with, uh, but that's that's part of it. Um, I, yeah, I'm frustrated, uh, but hey, it's uh, like Richard has said before. You treat this as a science experiment. Just figure out how it can be done, if it should be done, uh, before you treat it as a musical experiment. And I've been very guilty lately of trying to treat it as a, a musical experiment. So I need to I need to, as they say, science the shit out of this. So. There you go. Um, first sounds, uh, but uh, one step forward, three steps backwards. Do the hokey pokey. <laughs>